Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Trace video, and today we're going to be playing Ride 4, but we're only going to be playing Ride 4 and talking about the MotoGP recap from Portimao, which was just yesterday, of the 2021 season of MotoGP. Round 3 has already been completed, seems like yesterday it only just started, but I'm just going to be using a Ducati Panigale V4R in the colours of the Ducati Lenovo team in MotoGP, of course, and we're just going to be discussing Moto3, Moto2, and MotoGP. So starting from the bottom, of course, being in the lightweight class, Moto3, absolutely brilliant race. Moto3 absolutely never disappoints. It's always, always good. The action's always fierce and competitive, and Portimao race was exactly that. Andrea Mino starting on pole position. A lot of other riders were uh, getting involved earlier on, and I must say it was... It certainly had its surprises. It, it was a very interesting race. The ultimate finish was... Uh, Dennis Foggia was getting away quite a lot, and to be honest, I thought Dennis Foggia was going to do the victory here in Portimao. He looked great from the from the second the race started. He was looking pretty good. What uh, a very young and <laughs> a man who has just incredible potential. Pedro Acosta has done it again. He said to Akiayo and he said to the media, I do believe, that basically he was just going to go out there, have a bit of fun, and then take the race victory. And, and my goodness, he did exactly that. The final lap when he basically overtake Dennis Foggia into about turn 10 going sideways was nothing short of absolutely spectacular. The kid is incredible. He really is. I mean, he is 16, 17 years old and he looks like a seasoned veteran. I think I've said this three times now that Pedro Costa is great and uh, yeah, I'll accept that for another third time. Of course, it's going to be saying that many more times. So there's a lot of carnage, a lot of uh, contact, a lot of argy-bargy of classic Moto3 race, everything you expect really couple of riders who did end up crashing out a few moments in the race. Xavi Artigas crashed out again. Do you believe that is three races in a row and three DNFs? Not the start for Darren Binder and John McPhee. Of course, both of them suffering penalties and starting from pint lane and starting from back of the grid. John McPhee didn't really make much of a ground considering he started, penal he started with the penalty, of course, and in pit lane. Finished 23rd and out of the points. Not great for him. There's some good signs from a couple of riders there, like Gabby Rodrigo. He doesn't get the best of races. He's a bit inconsistent and he has terrible luck. But thankfully for Gabriel Rodrigo, he did finish in the points. He finished in fifth place. He was just about seven tenths away from the uh, race victory, do you believe? And maybe about five away from the podium. So very close. I don't even think it was from that. He did a grand job. And I must, be, must say, it's going to be good to see the Argentinian back on the podium eventually. But for the time being, he didn't make it. Nicolò Antonelli and Romano Fanati, Sergio Garcia, all battling for that podium position. But ultimately, Andrea Mino took third place. So to recap, it's Pedro Acosta, incredible, incredible race. Dennis Vodja second, and of course, Andrea Mino. Quick mention to Darren Binder as well. He didn't even finish in the points. He's also suffered a penalty from qualifying due to uh, waiting around and hanging around for a toe, which, I'm, as I mentioned last time, completely fine with. I would like to see more penalties given because we did we need less of that. So moving on to Moto2, a race that was carnage from the second it started. Uh, Sam Lowe's crashing into Turn 1 as he tried to avoid Remy Gardner. The rear just got out from him and just caused a humongous high side. It was really, really concerning to see Sam Lowe stuck under the bike as well for a brief moment. He was definitely winded, but I do believe he's okay. I've not heard anything otherwise. So if anyone knows anything in the comments section down below, let me know. But I really do hope that Sam is okay. Of course, the race victory did go to Raul Fernandez, Aaron Canet in second, and Remy Gardner in third place. But let me tell you, since Sam Lowe's went down, Marco Betzeki went straight to the front and he looked like he was just dominant. He looked like he was going to win the Grand Prix from a mile off. Of course, the temperatures were hotter because this was actually after the MotoGP race because of the F1 uh, race that was in between it all. So they try and... Uh, put MotoGP earlier on so people can watch F1 and MotoGP. Not for me, I'm only interested in MotoGP, as you know. But uh, Moto2 was on later, so the guys had not actually practiced with these sort of temperatures, and they were really hot. And equally, the action on the track certainly hotted up as well. It certainly did, especially with Raul Fernandez getting through the pack. Aaron Canet, great to see him competitive again. He was really good, looking like he did in Moto3. Aggressive. Ballsy, he was just everything. He had a lot of talent and he still has a lot to give in Moto2. So I was pleased to see him take his first po I do believe it's his first podium in Moto2. But he was very aggressive and he did not let the 
He did not let any battle shy away. He did not shy away from any battle. He didn't let like, anything get away from him. Super competitive. He looked like um, Joe Roberts was taking the lead and he was going to just escape in the front. Aaron Kinnett decides to have a bit of a battle and <laughs> it happened quite a lot of times. Marco Bezzecchi, unfortunately, he just fell behind, suffering with tyres from about 14 laps remaining. So earlier on, Marco Bezzecchi struggling with tyres, finished 6th place, so that's a 4th and a 4th and a 6th for Marco Bezzecchi. Not too great for one of the championship protagonists in my opinion. But uh, we'll have to move on now to Remy Gardner and Joe Roberts. We didn't really mention them, but Joe Roberts, fantastic race for him. He did get beaten up quite earlier on, but came back, stayed confident, stayed with it, moved his way through the pack, and hung on to the death for a podium, and then got beaten in two corners remaining. Remy Gardner, you could say, was a bit of an audacious move. As far as I'm concerned, rubbing his racing, there was a gap. And Joe probably expected it, but he took it in good stead. He's, uh, Remy Gardner did dive up in the inside of him in uh, the final two corners. But uh, honestly, a great race in Motor 2. A lot of carnage, as I say. Uh, Sam, uh, Sam Lowe's crashing out in the turn one. Celestino Vietti getting taken out by Nicola Bulliger. That one certainly got me mad because there was an awful move. Nicola Bulliger was completely out of control and took out Celestino. Not good. The two Idemitsu Honda Team Asia riders as well. Ayagora and uh, Somkiat Chantra clashing in turn five. It was a it was a bit of a move that was... It's hard to say who was at fault because Cameron Bobier was in, involved with it as well. Because I do believe Somkiat Chantra was ahead and Ayagora bumped into the side of Cameron Bobier, collapsed and went straight into the side of his teammate, Somkiat Chantra, which is a great shame, because Somkiat Chantra looked decent. He got himself up into Q2, and unfortunately, into, in the race, it didn't really fare well for the uh, for the Thai rider. Bo Benschneider also crashed out, and Yuri Montella and Stefano Manzi had a huge crash that sent both motorcycles on fire, and that was in the final corner. Really scary moment between the two of them. Fingers crossed they're both okay. I've not heard anything about it, but uh, it did look pretty nasty, let's say the least. So we're trying to keep things going. I'm going to move on to MotoGP. We've still got a lot to discuss. MotoGP was unexpected. It was very, very good. Compared to last year's race with Miguel Oliveira just disappearing into the distance. No, we didn't have that this, year, this time. It was a great, fantastic battle. Ultimately, Fabio Quattararo wins. Pekko Banyaya in second, and Joanne Mir takes third place, and that was your podium finishes. But uh, to actually guess what was going to happen in this Grand Prix, you'd have no idea. From the start of the race to the end, it was just complete unpredictability. Of course, Mark Marquez was back. We wasn't sure how he was going to fare. Did all right, to be fair to him. He, he did look a little bit uh, rusty, and he didn't look like that in qualifying, but I guess the duration of the Grand Prix, the heat... Is going to be extremely difficult, and especially in a clockwise track as well with that right arm, it's going to be very difficult for Mark. But he did a grand job. A hats off to him. I can't give him any more respect than he deserves. Really good performance from him. Had a massive moment when he tapped uh, Juan Mir's rear in turn three, I believe it was. Certainly looks a bit uh, sketchy, and it looked like both men were going to go down, but thankfully both men stayed and bought their respectable motorcycles. And uh, both finished the Grand Prix, Juan Mir third and Marc Marquez taking a valiant eighth place. So Marquez did, in fact, inherit a couple of positions and so did a lot of riders who were behind second place and third. During the latter stages of the race and probably mid to the latter part, Fabio Quattararo did, in fact, move his way through on a couple of riders, gets to the lead and starts churning out those fast lap times. And ultimately it looked like Fabio was going to win this one with ease. But Alex Rins did not let up. Alex Rins was superb in the Portimao Grand Prix. I'm a big Alex Rins fan, so I really like him. And he was brilliant in this one. Everything Fabio chucked in, he would chuck the lap in faster. Fabio responded, Alex responded. Fabio chucked another one, Alex responded. Brilliant, brilliant battles. Pan, turn five, camera pans over. Alex Rins, the Suzuki rider, goes down into turn five by dropping the front. Oh, that was so disappointing because we ha were in for a great, great battle, but unfortunately it never came. Alex Rins unfortunately dropped the ball. Zarco got into second place. I thought, here he is again, the Frenchman. Could he take back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back second positions? And he met his demise in turn 11. A gear-shifting problem was uh, the fault for him. 
as he dropped the front into turn 11. Disappointment, Valentino Rossi also succumbed to turn 11. Some woes going on there, he didn't even know what happened in that particular corner. Speaking about the Yamahas, Maverick Vinales started 12th after messing around in uh, qualifying 2 after having his lap time cancelled. Started 12th, by the first corner he was 21st. Maverick Vinales, I've said this way too many times, I'm going to say it again, completely unreliable. I like Maverick a hell of a lot, I've followed him since Moto3, and you just can't bet on this guy every time. It's so annoying for him and for his fans. I do hope they can just sort the consistency out of the Yamaha. Yamaha are just so unreliable anyway. They look great, they look dominant, and then they look terrible. So, <laughs> fingers crossed they can fix that one. Heartbreak for the Aussie fans as well as Jack Miller crashed out. It's not looking too grand for Jack Miller and the uh, Ducati team, I'll be honest, especially after being outshined by both Pramac Ducati team riders. And then again, Peko Banyaya in this one, as he took a very, very brilliant second place. Now, Peko Banyaya, if he hadn't have had these pole lap cancelled in Q2 Saturday, we could very well be looking at a totally, totally different Protomo Grand Prix. I do feel that Portimao was great for Peko Banyaya and Ducati, and I do really feel that Peko Banyaya is definitely a championship contender this year. He is just improving all the time aboard that Ducati. He looks calm, he looks collected. Jack Miller, on the other hand, looks a bit flustered, and I think the differences between these two Ducati riders is Peko Banyaya sitting pretty with a two-year contract, and Jack Miller's got to prove everything in this one-year contract he's got. And it doesn't help him when Johan Zarco is doing extremely well, and even the young rookie Jorge Martin did his uh, heroics in Qatar. Of course, mentioning Jorge Martin, he did not compete in the Grand Prix today, or yesterday, should I say, due to uh, injury. He had a pretty bad crash in pre-practice, and ultimately he didn't finish, of course, and he didn't finish the session, and couldn't even start the race. He's not the only rider who was out injured as well. Of course, Takanakagami injured in qualifying. He still competed. He started from the back of the grid, and he did really, really well, actually. He finished in 10th place. Battle of attrition. Not necessarily have to try and get up in front of the other riders, but if other riders crash out in front of you, you're going to get some points, and you're going to get some great positions. Luca Marini looked absolutely brilliant as well. Happy to see the rookie up there. He was about 10th place for a while, I do believe. But ultimately, something happened to him, and he sort of dra dropped behind. And Ea Bastianini did take the uh, top rookie spot again. And he was in ninth place, so good job for the uh, for the young Italian, the Moto2 World Champion, of course. But it was good to see Luca Marini qualified straight into Q2 from his heroics in free practice. So the good thing about MotoGP is literally you can't not predict anything. It's still just as unpredictable as anything. Miguel Oliveira, if I told you that he crashed out and didn't even finish this Grand Prix, you'd be asking me what, and unfortunately he did. He crashed out with about... I think it was about quite early on in the session, if not. Well, ultimately, he did manage to get back on the bike and sort of try and regain any points, but he didn't finish with any, unfortunately. The Portuguese man didn't ha quite have the home return that he wanted. But that is pretty much it for my MotoGP recap. Let me know in the comments section down below if you've got something else to mention, uh, something I've missed, but rather, and we can have a good old chat about it in there. So, guys, so let me know who your rider of the day is. Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP, you can do one or all three, entirely up to you. And those are my lap times on screen, I wasn't exactly pushing because I was more interested in what we were talking about. But upon that note guys, thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, like, comment and subscribe, hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. Have a chat with me in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching guys, and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here! If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.